All right, hello everybody. Welcome to our next lesson here, Theories of Emotion. Uh, this is for our unit or for the unit, uh, Impact of Motivation Emotions. So please take a moment there to uh, look over the objectives and standards. And our desired result. Uh, how do different theories explain emotions? A range of emotions. Interactions with the environment are the reason for emotions. Positive emotions and negative emotions can occur and can be related to an object, an event, social emotions, self-appraisal emotions, etc. In some cases, emotions can be innate, such as love, joy, surprise, care, anger, and fear. Uh, these are things that we're kind of born with, right? Uh, you know, we don't really have to learn them. We kind of are, are born with them and they come naturally to us. Emotions such as these are called primary emotions. Other emotions such as secondary emotions are learned through experience such as fear, pride, rage, shame, neglect, sympathy, and horror. Now there are different theories in psychology about emotions. Uh, first one here, uh, James Lang theory. During the 1880s, William James, uh, his top picture, uh, the picture on top there, sorry, uh, a psychologist and Carl Lang, his picture's on the bottom, a physiologist, uh, independently proposed an idea about emotion. What that means is that they both kind of came up with this idea separately and it's kind of been combined into uh, this theory together or was combined into this theory together. And it became known as the James Lang theory proposed the idea that emotion occurs in people because of the physiological responses to external events. Physiological means our body, right? What our body is reacting to, crying, smiling, shaking if we're cold or in fear or something like that. So an example, people don't cry because they are sad, but are sad because they cry. So that might seem a little strange to you, but um, what they were proposing is we become sad because we start to cry. So they were saying that our physiological uh, changes happen first before we become emotional. So we cry and then we become sad or we smile and then we become happy. Um, things like that. So different physiological states are related to different experiences of emotion. Okay, our second theory here, Cannon Bard theory. Uh, second theory here, Cannon Bard theory, excuse me. Uh, physiologist Walter Bradford Cannon disagreed with the James Lang theory. He had three major arguments against the proposal. One of these was a person can experience physiological arousal, excuse me, uh, arousal without feeling emotion. Uh, for example, you could be running or, you know, uh, racing someone and your heart might beat faster, but that doesn't mean that you're fearful or scared or upset. You could be, but, um, you know, it our physio what he was basically saying is our physiological arousal is not always connected with to our emotions or not always connected to our emotions uh, excuse me in terms of reaction time physiological arousal occurs slower than emotional reactions so what that means is let's say somebody's walking down a dark alleyway and they hear footsteps behind them they um, may start to fear or feel excuse me nervous or scared um, and then maybe their heart will start to race. Their heart doesn't start to race, and then you begin to feel, feel, excuse me, feel, <laughs> feel uh, scared or upset. So what he was saying is that our emotion happens first, rather than our physiological arousal. And also, a person can have different reactions for different states. Somebody may feel angry in one situation, and then the next time they might be in a similar situation, and they might feel calm or relaxed or not angry. Um, so we don't always have the same uh, emotions to the same type of events all the time. Now, Walter Bradford Cannon proposed his own theory of emotions in the 1920s, and this was later expanded by Phil Bard uh, in the 1930s, which resulted in the Cannon-Bard theory. In regards to the Cannon-Bard theory, uh, it states that emotion occurs at the same time as physiological arousal. So what that means is your heart will start to beat fast and you will feel, feel, excuse me again, fearful at the same time. So they're saying that emotional and physiological arousal responses are caused by the message, are caused by messages, excuse me, received from the brain and the autonomic um, nervous system at the same time. And I wasn't really able to include a picture of Phil Bard here, but there is more information to picture him there on that link uh, there. But again, uh, the, uh, excuse me, the Cannon Bard theory states that 
uh, our physical, physiological arousal, excuse me, and our emotional responses occur at the same time. So the Schechter and Singer's two-factor theory. During the 1960s, uh, that gentleman whose picture you see there, Stanley Schechter, and Jerome Everett Singer uh, had a different proposal for the theory of emotions. In their theory, people's experience of emotion, experiences, uh, excuse me, of emotion are based on two factors, physiological arousal, such as smiling, and cognitive interpretation, such as being with family or friends. When an emotion occurs, people look for an environmental explanation or physio I'm um, sorry an environmental explanation of physiological symptoms of arousal so when an emotion occurs people look for an environmental uh, an environmental explanation of physiological symptoms of arousal so if i'm hanging out with my family or my friends at a party or you know going to the movies or whatever the case may be and i smile when we're talking and things like that i might say hey I was happy or excited to see my family or friends, that's why I smiled or that's why I was laughing, that's why I was joyful. So we connect a certain event or a certain situation with uh, our physiological arousal, such as smiling or you know laughing or something like that. People are then able to give a label to an emotion they are experiencing in that environment. Like I said, me hanging out with my family or friends at a party or the movies, you know, laughing and smiling, I connect that physiological arousal of smiling and laughing to that you know that experience of oh i was having a good time with my family and friends or whatever the case may be and again i do apologize couldn't really include a picture of uh jerome everett singer here but there's uh, more information there and a picture of him there on that link if you're interested as well and uh i do believe i'm pronouncing everyone's names properly so i apologize if i'm not okay let's uh excuse me let's take a minute here to or a moment here to uh kind of summarize these three theories we just kind of talked about um, or that were discussed uh, be with, uh, before, excuse me, we move on to our last one. So the James Lang theory on the far left uh, side there, uh, in terms of this sight of, uh, 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 sight of oncoming car or a perception of stimulus, something happening to us, uh, again, on the far left side, the James Lang theory, they would explain it as the pounding heart. Immediately your heart would start to race, and then because your heart was racing, you would have the emotion of fear. Of fear. So again, James Lang theory states that we have a physiological uh, stimulus or arousal, such as the pounding heart, and then the emotion would come after that of fear. That because our heart was racing, uh, be, that because our heart was racing, excuse me, we have the emotion of fear. The Cannon Bard theory. Um, you can see that they have two arrows. What this states here too in the middle is they state it happens at the same time. Okay, this theory states that both are uh, physiological response of the pounding heart happens at the same time our emotion of our fear happens okay so they say hey that happens at both times okay that's the cannon bard theory in the middle on the far right hand side we have the Schechter uh, singer two factor theory on the right hand side again with the two arrows what they propose is that we have a physiological response of okay my heart is racing my heart is pounding and we connect that with okay my heart is racing my heart's pounding i'm probably afraid or i must be afraid that's where you see the cognitive label of i'm afraid and then we have our response or emotional response of fear okay so again the schecter singer two-factor theory we have the pounding heart arousal you know my body's reacting um that must mean i'm afraid or you know whatever the case may be you know i see this car my heart's pounding so I must be afraid or I'm afraid and then our fear or our emotion that comes about uh, our, I'm sorry our emotional reaction would be fear okay now uh, one more theory of emotion here the cognitive approach or cognitive approach or known or also called the Lazarus theory uh, so this gentleman here Richard s. Lazarus uh, was a psychologist uh, who also approached also approached emotions in a different way his research showed that people's experience of emotion depends on the way um, they appraise or evaluate the events around them. An example, let's say you're driving or somebody's driving and you're riding in the passenger seat and a person um, or you are driving on a, a winding road near the edge of a high cliff. And maybe the driver, maybe you who's ever driving may feel frightened, right? Because you're driving on this winding road towards the edge of this high cliff um, so you feel frightened or that person feels frightened uh, the passenger again could be you or maybe somebody else or whatever you want to think in this situation uh, the passenger 
may enjoy the view and say, oh, wow, this is a beautiful view. Look at, you know, look, look where we're at. It's really neat or cool or something like that. And they feel excited. So we don't always have to feel the same types of emotions, okay, as somebody else might be feeling. Um, somebody might be really afraid of heights. Somebody might be afraid of the ocean or swimming or boats or whatever, or airplanes, whatever the case may be. I'm really afraid of airplanes. You may not be as a person. So when I get on an airplane, I get a little nervous and, f and fearful. But you, on the other hand, or somebody you might know, might be happy to fly and loves flying and finds it relaxing and enjoyable and exciting. I don't personally. So again, we can all have different cognitive approaches or different um, uh, theories or thoughts uh, to a different situation. All right, so our closure. How do different theories explain emotions? So think about some of the emotions uh, or the theories of emotions that we talked about uh, or that were discussed in the lesson here. Um, that'll help you answer your questions uh, and try your best on the questions that follow. And please let me know of any questions or concerns. Um, and I uh, hope you all have a great rest of your day or night. And I hope to talk to you all soon. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.